Aimless said Europa Oil and Gas is an oil and gas exploration and production company which has uh, revenue from onshore UK oil production to help fund what it calls high impact exploration in Atlantic Ireland. It was awarded an asset to offshore Morocco just last month. Hugh Mackay is chief executive. He joins us now. Welcome, Hugh. Uh, you've Thank also you. produced Fulio Numbers, of course, as well, which uh, shows, I think, what well, cash at 2.9 million on the balance sheet. Uh, you're in the process of going a farm out in the Irish business and so forth. So it looks like you've got everything sort of well organised. Um, what do you say to investors as to where the company is at the moment? OK, so we're in... Looking at the numbers, we're in good shape. Uh, we have revenues. We've got production from Onshore UK last year. It was 91 uh, barrels, produced a revenue of 1.7 million, and we've got 2.9 million pounds cash, and we've got no debt. The uh, the next significant uh, increase in revenue could come from Wrestle. Wrestle's a discovery that we made, that the Egdon led joint venture made in 2014. We've got a planning inquiry. In, on the 5th of November. Uh, the North Lincolnshire Council has withdrawn from that planning inquiry, so the participants are going to be the planning inspector and the, our barrister and witnesses. And the planning inspector will make a planning decision. It should, uh, it will follow the inquiry and should be by the end of the year. And then if it's positive, and I very much hope it will be because we will be going into this very well prepared, and don't forget that the council's planning officers recommended it for approval, then early in the new year we'll be uh, swinging into action to put Wrestle into production. We expect that it's going to come on at 500 barrels a day gross. We've got 30%, so 150 barrels net to Europa. So if you think 91 barrels delivered a revenue of 1.7 million, then if we add on another 150, 240 million barrels, then we should be looking at a revenue between three and a half and four million pounds. Not a company maker, but having cash is very important. Mm. And uh, you know, so we, we will be going into this planning inquiry very well prepared uh, and to get the result that we want, which is planning permission. Investors have been uh, disappointed, haven't they, beforehand with the wrestle decisions in the past. Uh, yeah. What is different this time around? I mean, you mentioned the people that will be attending this time. Um, why are you more positive now? Well, North Lincolnshire Council, who would have been you know, the opponent in the planning inquiry, has withdrawn. Mm. So it's going to be, I wouldn't d describe it as one-sided, but the participants will be the Egdon Joint Venture, their, their barrister and our witnesses, and the planning inspector. So, you know, it, it's, um, it may help uh, provide better clarity on what we are proposing, and uh, it may make it go a bit quicker. How, how quickly do you see production coming online then? I'd hope to have it in production by the summer. Mm. And w yeah, another, pos another positive development was that Egdon agreed the planning conditions with the council in July. So we simply have to, you know, in January we'll be discharging conditions. And, and, and don't forget the, the, the production site is already there, the well's been drilled. It is, you know, it is a case of putting in place the production equi equipment and, do, and doing the work over to bring it onto production. Yeah. And we're very confident it's going to come on at 500 barrels a day. OK, uh, let's move on and take a look at what's happening in Morocco. You got that award la just last month yep. in September. Um, how excited are you about that? Oh, very excited. Um, Morocco is it's another Atlantic margin uh, province. It's had sporadic exploration since the 1960s. Its wells have found reservoir, source rock, but no one's found on that Atlantic margin has found all those ingredients combined into a commercial discovery. We look elsewhere in the margin, on the other side in Guyana, a very similar story. You know, for 60 years people thought there's, there's, no, there's no working oil play here or in Senegal and Mauritania, no working hydrocarbon here. And over the last few years, um, through exploration, five and a half billion barrels has recently been discovered in Guyana, where people thought there wasn't, mm. there wasn't anything. In Senegal and Mauritania, they're talking about 50 to 100 TCF of gas. Again, in an area which people were thinking, well, that's not very prospective. Morocco is similar. Um, you know, it's, it's a, 1,800 kilometres of Atlantic coastline, only 
10 wells in the deep water, only three wells have penetrated the, uh, the lower Cretaceous system that we're looking at. So the ingredients are all there, and there's some evidence that big companies are getting more interested in offshore Morocco again. To the south of us, Ganel has acquired 3,500 square kilometres of 3D. ENI have recently farmed out to Qatar Petroleum, and there's a licence uh, under negotiation directly abutting to the north of our licence. Uh, it would be very interesting to see who gets that. You know, mm. If it's a major oil company, then that's going to give us some endorsement. The work programme is comparatively low, uh, one we're very familiar with, reprocessing 3D, uh, which will then build a prospect inventory, and then we'd look to farm out to drill. And we've already had indications of interest in joining us at this early stage. And if we can farm it out now, we will. So the farm out, presumably, will pay for everything, so you're not going to go to shareholders for, for money? Well, we raised money for this last year. Um, right. So, and, you know, the, the work programme is $630,000. Uh, we put the bank guarantee up mm -hmm. uh, to the Moroccans in the summer. So, you know, there's no issues with Morocco. Mm. OK, uh, let's move on to what's happening in the Irish uh, business. Um, Ireland's an interesting case. There's been some political developments recently, yep. I think, that some investors will be uh, will, will know about. Just update us on what's happening in Ireland at the moment, because, as I say, the, the, the land of the, sh the, the, the the, the, the prospects have shifted a bit politically. Yes, so the, the Prime Minister, the TISA, Leo Varadkar, made a speech at the UN Climate Change Conference in New York um, about three weeks ago, at which he suggested that they were considering um, banning uh, oil exploration in, in Ireland in the future. And that sent our share price down to 2p, you know, so as simple as that. Um, we're a member of the Irish Offshore Operators Association, so all the companies that are active in Ireland, Exxon, Equinor, Woodside, Total, mm -hmm. ENI, they're mostly much bigger companies than, than Europa. Um, we're represented by IOA and we are in the process of seeking clarification from the Minister of uh, Energy as to exactly what did he mean. Mm. Um, Still at an early stage, um, but what we have been told is existing licences will be honoured for the full term. So that means if you've got a licensing option, you can convert it into a frontier exploration licence, drill it, appraise it, and if you've got a discovery, whether it's oil or gas, you can put it into a production licence. Mm. So that's, you know, that's very important. Looking to the future, um, you know, they were saying if there were future exploration, then they'd only allow it for gas rather than oil. Some of that detail needs to be understood better because um, you, know, you can quite often have a dry gas, yeah. as we have near Corrib, um, but often when you, most of the time when you find oil, there is always gas associated yeah. with it, um, and the gas-oil ratio, you know, will vary, but there's always gas associated with oil. So more, more clarity is required than that. But very importantly for Europa, um, not all the news was bad. Mm. Um, you know, for the first time, uh, there was a, a memorandum from Ireland's Climate Change Committee that they'd sent to the TSUC that was the basis for his, for his UN speech. And in that, they state very clearly that they view Irish gas, if there is any more, as a good thing, um, that it will provide energy security and it will be associated with lower emissions. So if you're going to use gas, better to use your own. And that's, that's very important for us because our flagship project is the Inishke gas prospect in the Slime Basin, about 10 to 15 kilometres away from the Corrib gas field. You know, Ireland's well, it's um, only or its main producing gas field, and it's in decline. Came on in 2015 at around 350 million scuffs a day. Mm. Last quarter, it did 245. It's a very, you know, it's a very important piece of Ireland's energy infrastructure. Um, Ireland's got a very vigorous economy. Its electricity demand is forecast to increase. They're phasing out coal. Uh, they've phased out peat. Uh, and they're wanting an increased uh, contribution from renewables. But as the minister said in July, when the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow, you need a backup, and, and best if that backup can come from gas. Mm. What's the what, what's the di diary looking like then for, for the Irish asset? Where, where are you going now with this as you go into 2020? 
Well, the, the, the key focus right now is on getting the Inish K prospect farmed out. Mm -hmm. you know, it's drill ready. We've got a, a site survey in process. I hope that we'll get that approved uh, in the next few months. And then the next step for this license will be to acquire a site survey, which would be in 2020, and then leading to a well at the earliest in 2021. But what we're focused on right now is getting it farmed out so that someone will fund that drilling. And I don't know if the TSIC speech has galvanised action, but we're certainly seeing a lot more interest in Inishki from not only the existing major who you know, we had to um, uh, intimate that we had an offer from uh, back in November, mm. uh, but there's also other new interest in, in the annual report we refer to parties, and that's right, because it's plural. Right. So I'd hesitate to call it, uh, you know, nothing's in the bag until it's signed, but there are indications of, of uh, competitive uh, tension, and I think gas in Ireland, I think people are waking up to the fact it's potentially a very valuable commodity. We've got infrastructure that you know, is in you know, it has got ullage in it, Gas will be important for Ireland. It ought to be in everyone's best interests, yeah. ourselves, the CORB partners, the Irish state, if we can keep the CORB infrastructure running at 350 million scuffs a day, every day for the next 30 years. Mm. Let's take a look at the share price, because you, you mentioned the fact it went down to 2p because yes. of the Irish statement. Yep. Um, you own, I think, what, 1.3% of that's the That's correct. Now, I should say yep. I'm also a shareholder here, so yep. um, uh, that's what has to be out there. But let me just quickly ask you about um, how you talk to investors about this because of the steps lower that we've had and, and the pain that clearly is obviously being felt by you as many as many yeah as many yeah people. yeah I mean I I mean I my shareholding in Europa has come from my personal investments out of my mm. post-tax savings so none of this is uh, options or other forms of freebies this has been my cold hard cash so I've paid 328 thousand pounds for it and uh, it's not worth that right now. So, you know, of course we want to get you know, the share price up. I think we are, we are at a particularly low point. I think, you know, between now and the end of the year, um, if we get wrestle away, I mean, that's, you know, very important, um, get, getting, you know, doubling our revenues. Um, and if we can get an Irish farm out away, um, that, you know, if we've got, if we've got Inish K away, a million pounds in back costs, and, you know, suddenly you're on, you're on the uh, on the runway for drilling a 1.5 TCF gas pr prospect with an NPV 10 of a billion dollars. So, so what, 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 what's the, what would that take the uh, the market cap up then from two? Well, <laughs> um, you know, I would hope that we'd be in a double digit share price if we did uh, if we did both those things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously the market will market will do what the market will do, but um, you know, there's considerable value in uh, you know the 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 risk value that uh, FinCap yeah. are carrying for us is 30p. Yeah, yeah. So, OK, for the back end of this year, uh, 5th of November is the public inquiry at Wrestle. Yeah. And you aim to get that hopefully settled by the end of the year, you're saying? Well, yeah. the planning inspectors, um, you know, they, yeah. they, they have a timetable for making a decision. Um, you know, they, 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 they definitely will not sit in it forever. And given that there's half the number of, uh, yeah. of uh, barristers taking, you know, there's not two sides, there's one side, I'd hope he ought to be able to process it quickly. And I suppose finally, the other important point I'd make is new ventures. Um, yeah. We have, a, I suppose, a switch in strategy. Uh, that's been in place since the beginning of the year. We feel that the, the sort of high impact company making um, um, part of the portfolio like we have in Ireland and uh, Morocco um, is that hopper is full at the moment and where, where we're putting more attention on are for new ventures in the appraisal and development space where geological chance of success is 100% and where you're looking at execution risk, development risk, commercial risk. So a different, uh, um, you know, a different part of risk reward space. Uh, we've been actively processing opportunities since uh, the beginning of the year. Um, 
How, how much a risk though is that? I mean, you, we were talking there about the share price, the pressure the company's under. Should your time not be better spent in concentrating on things you know are going to work that are in the pipe already rather than look for new challenges? Well, we can do, I mean, we are capable of doing both. You know, right. we're not taking the eye off the ball in uh, Ireland by any means. No. Um, so, you know, we have the ability to multitask. You know, we do have revenues. Yeah. Um, we can fund the company from revenue, so we are capable of you know, working Ireland hard, which yeah. we've done. And, uh, you know, a huge amount of work is going in there. Um, we've landed, the we landed Morocco, and most, you know, that, you know, you'd say yeah. most of the work, most of the technical work in Morocco was done in 2018. Um, so, you know, so now we've got you know, some spare capacity to look at other new ventures. Yeah. Look, well, good luck, and uh, thanks indeed for joining us, uh, Hugh. It's a pleasure to catch up with you once again. Hugh Mackay is the Chief Executive of Europa Oil & Gas.